all right everybody now we'll talk about insecticides and herbicides how exactly they can produce toxicity i'm sure you all know about oh i must have inserted his picture somewhere here um the person is very much in the news these days uh who's the who's in the news these days who was attacked by the nerve agent you guys did you follow news uh it is one of the hot topics these days every day i see a new stories being published on bbc cnn and other media forums hmm any idea okay i'll sh i should give you a hint uh putin is involved uh, involved in this was the president of i think russia hmm no i think you guys did not follow it uh wait a minute okay i want you all to read it in fact i will post it in the google classroom so that you would know what's happening in the world okay all right so i tell you what these insects insecticides and herbicides okay they are toxic and you would be surprised to know that they are basically the nerve damaging agents okay and i i'm sure you'll be surprised to know that these agents were actually used in the past to attack it they were used as a warfare just imagine they were used as weapons like you don't even know and all of a sudden uh you were sprinkled with the insecticides and herbicides and you were just thinking that okay we won it and nobody attacked on us although you were attacked just imagine anyways so the first one we i want to talk to you about is or organophosphorus insecticides i'm sure when you would be doing a uh, autonomic nervous system you must have uh, gone through it uh, so let's talk about it when we talk about properties and mechanism of action okay so organophosphorus insecticides include parathion malathion and di uh, diazinoids okay so these insecticides have replaced organochlorine pesticides which persist in the environment and have been associated with an increased risk of cancer so organophosphorus insecticides do not persist in the environment however their potential for acute toxicity is higher so organophosphorus insecticides are uh, are uh, insecticides are characterized by their ability to phosphorylate the active esteric a site of ACHE which is acetylcholinesterase toxic effects result from acetylcholine as accumulation now before i go further i want you to take this on this slide okay that uh, just imagine this guy here okay this person is sprinkling organophosphate uh pesticides in order to get rid of the pests all right now as a result what is happening is he, this man does not even know that when he is um uh, sprinkling this organophosphate all right as a result what is happening is this is ACHE inhibitor so what is ACHE do it do is that these are uh you know if you remember from your autonomic nervous system they would attack on the acetylcholine and then break it into acetyl and choline right so uh these ache would be killed by the organo uh, for, uh phosphate in uh, okay so these are the ache inhibitor as a result when ache will not be there all right as a result what will happen a lot of acetylcholine would be accumulated in the uh post synapse 
neuron, okay? Now this neuron would of course go crazy because when we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system, so we know that muscarinic and nicotinic two types of receptors are there, right? So when acetylcholine would be um, accumulated here in abundant amount, so obviously these both of these receptors would uh, produce exaggerated, you know, effect. All right. So the muscarinic symptoms of uh, organophosphate would be, uh, you know, this mnemonic, which is sludge. And I tell you, it's it's you can you can link it to being leaky. Okay. By the way, if you want to recall about muscarinic receptors and all that. So I do have a playlist in the YouTube channel, so you can go through it and read through it in order to uh, recall our autonomic nervous system if you want to. Okay. So when we talk about muscarinic sim symptoms, okay, so it it refers to sludge, okay, just uh, it's a mnemonic, okay. So by sludge we mean salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, GI cramps, emesis. So you see it's leaky, okay. So Let's say if a farmer is into the um, hospital with uh, teary eyes, with runny nose, right, with mouth having excess saliva. So obviously we can suspect that the person could ha uh, could be exposed to organophosphate, right? Okay. Now nicotinic symptoms. Nicotinic uh, nicotinic symptoms are midriasis, tachycardia. Muscle weakness, muscle twitching, muscle fasciculation, and BP high paralysis, right? So these are all, and I tell you, this paralysis is the one of the extreme negative effect of organic phosphate poisoning, which obviously we don't want to have. So uh, nicotine gives tension, which is hypertension, weakness, and paralysis. In short, if you want to summarize the symptoms so you can do that i am not treating the mnemonic because it's not so academic but i put it up so you can refer to it to memorize it anyway so how exactly the person would look like when obviously the person's muscarinic uh receptors would be over as is uh, over stimulated so as a result what would happen the person would look like this right teary eyes Excessive saliva, emesis, defecation, as we talked earlier, right? And what would happen if the nicotinic receptors are activated along with the muscarinic one? Okay, so you see the trembling, hypertension, and all of these symptoms. And now, if you combine both of this in one person, so just imagine the extreme toxic effect, right? Okay, so how exactly we can treat it? So assisted respiration in decontamination are needed as soon as possible to prevent irreversible inhibition of ACHE, which involves strengthening of phosphorus enzyme bound. So you see, when we talk about ACHE, and when we say inhibition of, uh, when we say aging, okay? So by aging, we means that these ACHE would die, okay? So we don't want this to cleave away, okay? And we don't want it to be inhibited because it's very much important for us, right? Okay, so atropine reverses all muscarinic effects but do not reverse neuromuscular activation or paralysis, right? So then we have uh, paralidoxin uh, uh, reactivates ACHE, particularly at the neuromuscular junction. It is often used as an adjunct to atropine. However, it is very effective in parathion poisoning, okay? All right. Then comes up carbamate insecticide. So carbamate insecticides include, among others, carbaryl, carbofurin, isolan, and pyramate, okay? So these agents are characterized by their ability to inhibit ACHE by carbamylation, uh, uh, okay? So what is this? Basically, it affects on the protein, okay, and disrupts it, 
so it is that. So, carbamate insecticides produce toxic effects similar to those of phosphorus containing insecticides. So, generally, the toxic effects of carbamate compounds are less severe than those of organophosphorus agents because carbamylation is rapidly reversible. All right. So treatment of carbamate poisoning is similar to that for organophosphate poisoning, except that paradidoxin therapy is not an effective antidote because it does not interact with carbamylated acetylcholinesterase. Okay. Then we have botanical insecticides. So among these, we have uh, nicotine stimulates nicotinic receptors and result in membrane depolarization. So poisoning is characterized by salivation, vomiting, muscle weakness, seizure, um, respiratory arrest. It can be treated with anticonvulsant and agents for symp uh, symptomatic relief. Then we have pyrethrum, a common household insecticide is toxic only at high level. Allergic manifestations and irritation of the skin and respiratory tract are the most common adverse effects. These are treated symptomatically. Then we have rotenon poisoning. So it, it's rare in human and generally results in GI disturbances that are treated symptomatically. Then we have herbicides. So among herbicides, we have uh, gil uh, glyphosate, now widely used worldwide, is relatively safe herbicide that does not persist in the environment. Its major reported adverse effects are irritation of eyes and the skin. Then we have paracord. So it causes acute GI irritation with bloody stools, followed by delayed respiratory distress, and the development of congested hemorrhagic pulmonary edema, which is thought to be caused by superoxide radical formation and subsequent cell membrane disruption. So death may ensure, uh, ensue several weeks after inge ingestion. So this ensue means that it will happen uh, not exactly at the moment, but a bit later on, okay? So treatment consists of prompt gastric leverage, which means emptying of the stomach, administration of um, catharics and absorb, uh, adsorbents benefit some victims. Then we have uh, 2,4-D, which is 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid, causes neuromuscular paralysis and coma. So the, now I'm talking about the agents which are like really toxic and they were used in the warfare, okay? So then long-term toxic effects are rare. Then we have uh, the other one, which is Agent Orange, which is also known as 245-DT. And this is trichlorophenoxyacetic acid and it is no longer used. Why it is no longer used, I'm going to show you in a while. Okay, and the reason being that uh, it produces, it, 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 it's really horrible, okay? Why? Because it's not soluble in water, right? And when it's not soluble in water, it means that it will not biodegrade easily and it will produce toxic effects for such a long time. It will affect the memory and it will affect the babies, okay? So I'm going to show you in a while. I think before moving on, I should show you a video. Wait a minute.
so did you see uh, and i tell you i chose this video specifically because this video did not have um, you know the teratogenic effects which were produced in the uh, in the babies right of uh, vietnam so if you're interested you can always type orange agent and uh, i'm sure you would enjoy not enjoy but you would get knowledge about it right i'm sorry i use the word enjoy which is not good okay now the uh, next category we which which we want to talk about is cyanide poisoning right so these are fumigants and uh, rodenticides as the name indicates they uh, they kill the rats and the, the rodents right okay so cyanide poison uh, possesses a high affinity for ferric iron now, where exactly the ferric iron is uh, is there? You see, when we have uh, when we have oxidative phosphorylation, especially when we talk about electron transport chain, right? Um, within the respiration, right? Uh, so there you you have this ferric, all right. And the other other place is within the mitochondria, okay. So within the mitochondria, you have this cytochrome oxidase, okay? So here you have this ferric, okay? So cyanide goes and binds to it, okay? So it reacts with iron and cytochrome oxidase in mitochondria to inhibit cellular respiration, as I talked, thereby blocking oxygen use, okay? So when oxygen is not used, obviously energy won't be produced, right? So it is absorbed from all roots, except alkali salts which are toxic only when ingested so poisoning is signaled by bright red venous blood and a characteristic odor of bitter almonds cyanide causes transient uh, tns stimulation followed by hypoxic seizures and death right so obviously when cellular respiration won't happen then the entire uh processes would happen right okay so the treatment must be immediate with administration of 100 percent oxygen a mild and sodium nitrate with oxidizes hemoglobin and produces methemoglobin which effectively competes for cyanide ion can also be administered so sodium thiosulfate can be administered to accelerate the conversion of cyanide to non-toxic thiocyanate by mitochondrial rodenius so you see this will be released by the kidney right okay so activated charcoal may also be used then we have hydroxocobalamin which binds with cyanide is also available as an antidote thank you everybody that is it for today